this is the London residence of multi-millionaire lawyer Giovanni Di Stefano, scourge of the British legal establishment, hero of the British criminal establishment. Hello, come on in. Don't expect him to answer the door in his own hand, do you? Follow you, Michael? Yep, come on up, This is Michael, his son and protege. Sandra? Yeah? You got that. Now, who uh, who have you had a letter from? Just... Uh, from Jeremy Bamber, asking if he represents you. And he's seen you uh, in the media representing various people. Very happy to take on my case. How about that? Jeremy? Sure. Is in Paul Sutton as well. Bloody hell, Jeremy Bamber, who else? Five murders. I, I should be known as Mr. Murder. <laughs> who is he then? Well, he's a man that allegedly, some years ago, allegedly, and he was convicted and you can't go behind uh, 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 that, allegedly uh, killed his entire family, his mother, father, sister and two children. He has professed his innocence throughout and... Um, um, his case was, was refused, and I think I mean, there's some serious doubt uh, there. Whether he did it or didn't, I, hell, I, I just don't know. But um, obviously this is the type of case that we are bound to attract because of that. But you can't pull a rabbit out of a hat on every case. It's impossible to win always. But I'll take his case. Mr. Murder, the devil's advocate. Giovanni Di Stefano is no ordinary lawyer. He boasts fabulous wealth. I've got more than 200 million quid. I don't want a bloody dog. I want to spend it first. A mysterious past. I went to Yugoslavia and I was under the Italian fucking bombs. And heavyweight criminal connections. Well, I don't act for Snow White, do I? Unless, you know, well, she's with a set of perverts. <laughs> we entered Giovanni's world for three months to discover why a man, reckoned to be worth hundreds of millions, would suddenly want to dedicate his life to emptying British prisons of their most notorious criminals. Let's go to court, come on. Giovanni's client base includes M25 killer Kenneth Noy. The godmother, Linda, Black Widow, Calvi. The timeshare fraudster, John, Goldfinger, Palmer. And notorious property tycoon, Nicholas van Hoogstraten. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Un tè e il toast, per favore. In recent years, Giovanni has become very successful in these high-profile cases. And has made many enemies, too. One of the um, handicaps of the job, obviously some interesting well-wisher, uh, sent me a brochure. A nice brochure. That's not a lovely message. Now the thing is, is I actually like some of them, so I might even order one. Thank you very much whoever thought of me. Come on. Our personal life must not interfere in our professional obligations. Giovanni seemed an unlikely crusader for defending the seemingly indefensible. We wondered, was it really for the sake of justice, or for the money, or just for kicks? Well, I'll be there in about 10-15 um, minutes. I'll be outside the court um, um, uh, there. Giovanni has surrounded himself with a hand-picked team of some of the sharpest operators in criminal law. Okay, see you. Men like South London solicitor, Paul Martin. Giovanni says good morning. Bon giorno, a specialist in overturning convictions by unearthing mistakes in legal paperwork or flaws in the evidence. And barrister Jerome Lynch, car salesman turned hotshot QC. Greetings, chaps. Today they are meeting to discuss Giovanni's latest client, Nicholas Van Hoogstraten. Van Hoogstraten is an infamous property tycoon serving 10 years for the manslaughter of a business associate. 
worth several hundred million. He's well known for his controversial business methods. So we were surprised by Giovanni's take on him. Well, I have to tell you, um, honestly, um, when he was um, active in London in the 60s and 70s, he was an idol of mine when I was a, a, a schoolboy. The dash debonair character, the boy that had made it from nowhere to something. Um, he drove the right car, he had the right length of hair, he had the right property, and I admired him. Never thinking that one day um, I would ever be in a position to perhaps even go close to saying that um, I, I would help him. But it's been it's been great for that reason. Really. <laughs> Giovanni's team arrive at the Royal Courts of Justice to argue that Van Hoogstraat be released on bail pending their appeal against conviction. It's his biggest case so far. On this occasion, he didn't get the results he was hoping for. How'd it go? Very well. Very well. Their bail was refused, but um, there are other aspects of the case which perhaps are far more interesting and which will develop. I mean, it's wrong. I mean, it, I, I swear to God, if it had been any other person, Nicholas Van Smith, he'd have got out today. You've got your work cut out with Hoogstrand. He's not a popular guy, is he? No, I mean, that doesn't help, of course, but it doesn't mean to say that we should abandon a person like that simply because we've got our work cut out. Our work cut out means we've got it cut out. We'll bloody well cut it out. Doesn't seem we're very popular with taxes, does no. it? Reverend Richard Buster Page, a former bodyguard to the Saudi royal family, is Giovanni's best friend. So many solicitors will not take on these cases because it scares them. Throw it right here, cop. No. Yeah. What do you mean it scares them? They're frightened of fighting the system. They, they, they take it for granted because the men's are high profile that it's going to uh, do their uh, career harm by taking on the case. Giovanni, though, seems to relish defending the blackest sheep of the criminal flock. <laughs> A week later, we're invited to join Giovanni in Tenerife. He's managing the property empire of another of his clients, John Goldfinger Palmer. As rich as the Queen, Palmer is currently serving eight years for a timeshare scam that made him over £30 million. Investigators said he defrauded 17,000 victims that included retired couples. But Giovanni insists they've all got it wrong. The average everyday Mr. Joe Soap, as we call them, uh, would have a problem coming out on holiday. It's thanks to him that people have been able to dream about the sun. And he's made it possible. I mean, 17,000 victims is quite a lot. Oh, shit. There's 200. Absolute rubbish. Though Giovanni thinks it's rubbish, the Court of Appeal disagreed, and Palmer must now stump up £33 million in fines. Undeterred, Giovanni is trying to stop the payment, as well as being Palmer's business manager. You know, the troubles are that when you are an absentee landlord, you know, your tenants can sometimes run wild. So, with my presence and my advice, and people know that I am his lawyer and his friend, the thing says you can't be a friend to your client. You know, um, obviously, people have backed off and not uh, extracted the urine. <laughs> Giovanni is staying at this five-star hotel 
that he says Palmer was instrumental in building. The people don't really admire John Palmer, do they? Kind of contrary to everybody else. He's, he's got a good business mind. Anyone that can think of that, that can turn that, nothing, into that, has got to be doing something right. Forgetting anything else about it, you can only have admiration for this, because it really is beautiful. What about his timeshare business? What do you, what do you, what do you think about that? I don't really know enough about it to comment. As far, I mean, if you, you, you can go there, you can get a taxi and go and see it. It, it, it looks fantastic. You go and ask anybody there, no one's, no one's disappointed. I've been there before, everyone's smiling, children running around, everyone's happy. Nobody's disappointed. Palmer's timeshare empire is about to be destroyed. His only hope is Giovanni's audacious High Court bid that there's an error in the £33 million confiscation order. Throughout our stay in Tenerife, he has been waiting for the news, and the result is due tonight. If he wins, it will be Giovanni's biggest coup yet, and one of the most expensive and humiliating blunders in British legal history. Who would have thought? Oh, so, what's the news? Well, owing to a serious procedural mistake by the Crown Prosecution Service, Mr Palmer will now keep all the resorts in Tenerife. He will now keep £33 million that he should have paid, and... Um, we are very content that, um, well, I'm very content, for one, that justice has been done in the legal manner. In, la in layman's terms, what mistake will the prosecution make? They served the wrong notice on confiscation. It's very simple. What should they have served? I mean, A right notice. Which was? Section 72. It's technical, but it's a wrong notice. That's all you need to understand. They served the wrong form. <laughs> It means that the resorts can carry on. They don't have to be sold. 33 million is kept and good for the lawyers. I suppose it must be quite interesting really for you because it isn't the average everyday type lawyer. Um, mannerism. You'd expect um, a lawyer, I suppose, to go to his country home in Isha in Surrey or somewhere like that, or Clavering in, um, there you have his city office, people running around, pinstripe suit, and speaking all la da Well, I can do that as well, of course. Depends who I'm, uh, who I'm with. But I prefer to speak it exactly as it bloody is, so yeah, people make no misunderstanding. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. I mean, how do you do that uh, from the normal lawyer? I'm better. <laughs> what is your real kind of motivation in life now? Now you've got the money and... Keep it. <laughs> I'm glad that... With the with the palm with the with Mr. Palmer's case, how it went. Because if it wasn't him, I mean, if you've got to go back, let's go into the archive and take out all the documents and how many people were convicted without following the procedures. If you're going to convict some convict someone, you've got to do it properly. I'm not at all. <laughs> people in the you set a precedent. If anything, he's raising the levels of the legal system in England. People have to see it that way. You need someone to point out your mistakes so you don't do it again. So he's raising the standard. It can only be a good thing for the British legal system. A fortnight later, Giovanni's back in London for Van Hoogstraten's appeal against his conviction for manslaughter. It's a big day, but Giovanni's playing it cool. If justice is to be done today, whether we like Mr. Van Hoogstraat or not, he's got to be clear. It's simple as that. Giovanni believes that his legal team have found a flaw in the original trial. If he's right, the conviction should be quashed, 
and Hoogstrom will be one step closer to freedom. As you are all aware, the appeal of Nicholas Van Hoogstraten was heard today before Lord Justice Rose, Mr Justice McCoon and Mrs Justice Cox. That appeal was successful and the conviction for manslaughter was quashed. In December, Van Hoogstraten finally walked free. Giovanni's celebrations began much earlier. We won! <laughs> God bless the day that I'm fucking there. How is it that we always find these simple little points? You can't bank on them all. <laughs> Listen, I'm happy with the two that we've done. Yeah, well, Palmer and Hoogstrom, the richest, well, supposedly the richest men in penal history. No, <laughs> that, he's not interested in politics, he's just interested in money. That's all Hoog's interested in. And they see that because of my past with Zimbabwe, which you don't need to know about, if I have a history with Zimbabwe, they see him, they see him and I together, stop. They see the vengeance, they see the ming jets, what's going on between them? Vengeance, ming jets, Zimbabwe. What was all that to do with miscarriages of justice? It was time to dig deeper into Giovanni's business dealings and find out how he had made his fortune.